Wolf Team brings us Ernest Evans for the Genesis. There's also a Sega CD version, but this is the Genesis version. Um, why are we playing this? Man, I don't know. I usually try to connect the game to some sort of a current thing that's happening, but I have nothing in this case. In this case, it's just time to play some Ernest Evans for the Genesis. This is a game that came out in 92, made by Wolf Team, uh, Genesis uh, veterans who went on to make the Tales of games, I believe. Uh, Ernest Evans, the second game in a trilogy, but this really is probably the most well-known one because of what you're seeing right now. The character animation for Ernest Evans is interesting. Well, let's begin the game. Really, I think this is the main reason anyone knows of this game, because of how we move. Ernest Evans does not look like a typical uh, 2D character. He is made of many different sprites. With So all these sprites are being moved individually, allowing for some very smooth motion. And Ernest Evans is an adventurer. He goes into dangerous places looking for treasures. Oh, look at that smooth animation. I mean, I did not play Ernest Evans when it was new. I'm trying to figure out if I would have been impressed by this. I honestly can't tell. Oh, I'm being being hit by porcupines. My life going down because of these spiny boys. There's also a skeleton with a, like a scythe. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for him to come by. Swing my whip. Just swing it around like that. There you go. There we go. Skeletons are tough, but Ernest Evans is tougher. And also, I like tentacles coming out of the ground. So what are we doing here? What is Ernest Evans doing? Well, he's here in this cave to try to get a treasure, I believe. Whoop. Getting smacked around. You can also... Whoop. There we I got a key, I think. You can hook yourself onto some hooks, but the swinging doesn't work like you might think. Like, if you ever played something like Castlevania 4, it doesn't really work like that. It's seems it's like a lot more finicky, I think. Also, I'm low on health. Well, my first lo my first life bar anyway. I have two more. Let's see if I can. Ernest Evans can grab onto ledges, which is neat. He's a pretty agile fellow. Let's just see if I can stay down there, stay down here, and not get hit by that guy. There we go. Oh, I did. Should not have gotten that. That's not a health potion. You might think it was. No, that's a sleeping potion. Ernest Evans is. Oh no, we're just. Oh, we're tum. Oh no, that went very badly. We're continuing. Things can go bad for Ernest Evans very quickly. You see, I got that sleeping potion, and then it was all over. Cunning traps. Okay, use the key to get in here. And here's, like, this idol. We're gonna get that. Okay, there we go. You can see that his motion and his attack are completely different. He can just, like, crawl around on the ground, but whip his arm all the way around. Oh, here comes rocks. Somersault, Ernest! Climb and jump and flip out of danger! We're doing it! Stage clear. Oh, no, he got hit by... It's fine. I got bonked by that big one, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, next level. We got the treasure. Oh, ah! I got tentacled by this big spiny tentacle. So I have not played Ernest Evans much. I've played it a little bit, but this is whoop, this is all new to me, really. I can't, that doesn't look like I can do. I can. Whoop. It's like that. These heads, the Maui heads, are invincible, so we won't bother fighting them. Ernest Evans. You know, you kind of you're kind of not sure what he's capable of. It feels. Whoop, it feels like you're kind of barely in control. Uh, uh, sometimes things like that can happen. 
I mean, the control isn't isn't bad, but it feels like, hmm. Like, if I... Hmm. The timing is not quite right on this. Hmm. Should I wait, or should I look for a different way to go? Can I climb? Okay, yes, that's right. I can also do that. Ernest Evans is a man of many talents. He could just climb a sheer wall. Oh, no, I got hurt. So now I'm... Up, up, uh, uh, uh. Death comes easy to Ernest Evans. He is very agile. He has a lot of motion, but he must control his motion. So we can go prone. We can crouch walk. Ernest has many capabilities if you have the patience to learn them. Look, look how fast these arrows are coming out. Okay, just wait for that gap then. Okay. Ugh, whip for your life, Evans! Just keep whipping! I think we're okay. We're not getting hurt back here. We did it. There's so much happening. There's so much happening. Now we're in, now we're here, getting boosted into the air. You might wonder, what is the storyline of Ernest Evans? Why is he doing the things he does? What motivates a man like Ernest Evans? Well, there is a manual that we could probably take a look at to get some some lore into the Ernest Evans connected universe. I do like how he's able to use his whip regardless of whatever position he's in. Oh, look at this rolling. Look at all this rolling we're doing. Oh, no. I got hit so many times by those spikes. You might notice iframes are not a thing that Ernest Evans is familiar with. He does not know what they are. So he can get infinitely comboed in a second. I think we should keep going down, probably. It seems right. I, I got a thing. It's like a little jewel. This will take all of Ernest's cunning to get out of this. All of it. I mean, I guess that didn't really require cunning. It was just more like a jump. I don't know what that gem did or if it was worth all that to get it. Only one continue left. Things are not looking good, but I did get some health, but I did take a tremendous amount of damage crawling backwards through scorpions while whipping. But you can feel that there are infinite possibilities with Ernest Evans. If you can learn the ways of Ernest, if you can control him, if you can manipulate his supple body. There are so many things that you uh, uh, so many things you can do. Like this? Is this good? It I don't mm, 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 mm. If things are exploding, that's probably good. Please, okay, good, thank you. I was going to say, how long are you exploding? How long are you going to explode? That's how long. Okay, next stage is a turtle. It's a big spiky turtle. Uh, big spiky boy. 
You know, when we go rolling like that, it's kind of hard to control Ernest Evans. I mean, Ernest is the type of man that anyone would have a difficulty controlling. Not only in his life of action, but also his love life. You know, the weird thing about this trilogy is that all the games seem pretty different. Like if you look at the first and third games of the trilogy, they don't really... S okay, that was not floor. That was just empty... F that was just spikes. Kind of looked like there was my, like a rock layer over the spikes. There was not. Anyway, that's... So, that is... Let's take a look at... Hold on, why don't we take a look at the manual, and maybe that could give us some insight into the ways of Ernest. I'm gonna have to pull this up. Let's see what we got. Here we go, Ernest Evans, published by Renovation for the Sega Genesis. How do you handle the cartridge? That's not really what we need. Thank you for purchasing Ernest Evans. They're very grateful that you did so. Let's see. This is a side view type action game for one player. The gamer will, manip will manipulate the hero explorer Ernest Evans as he ventures through the world of 1980s to defeat evil. The most evil decade. Please connect the Genesis controller with the control pad one. How you start up the Genesis. All right. Okay, here we go. Here's the story. Dr. Ernest Evans carefully adjusted the pillow that supported his back and turned to his long-haired grandson, who was slowly assembling a linked chain with raw materials. Ernest, my boy, there is something I must ask of you, and you must listen intently. I have an important task for you, now that you are old enough, Evans said. Gramp, can it wait? I have to finish my chain cord, or I'll never drag that gold chest out of the creek. Young Ernest replied. Please listen. I have been waiting many years until I could pass this vital information on. Your, fi your father had to care for you and Annette, so I've kept this inside until now, Evans replied. Ernest gazed at his grandfather with renewed interest. Awesome, he thought. Maybe I could become a great man like Gramp. When your mother foiled the ambitions of Vincente DeMarco, she confided in me a secret she had discovered. Annette told me about three precious idols, Evans said. What about the idols, Gramp? Ernest asked. These idols were scattered somewhere around the world by Hastur before its power was crushed. Annette knew where the first idol was, and we found it in the Santa Clara Valley of California back in 1940, Evans said. Your grandmother died shortly after, and your father came to live with me. He fell for Annette, and then I continued the search myself. What's the big deal about these statues? Why such an extensive search, Gramp? Annette told me the idols, when together, would bring about an evil beyond comprehension, Evans continued. This evil, known as Maver, wouldn't wipe out civilization and start over like its counterpart, Hastur. It would meld with the planet and roam the universe forever. Ernest, my boy, it is the 1980s, and you are now 23 years old. I have one statue, and Annette told me that DeMarco's remaining syndicate, led by a man named Tresseter, holds another. I know where the other statue is, and almost got it. But that was when I broke my leg, broke both my legs badly. Go to Mexico, to the Cotarique Cave, get the other statue from Tresidor in Europe, and meet your fate in Peru. Can I finish my chain cord and get that gold chest first, Gramp? Forget the chest, Ernest. Finish the cord, because you'll definitely need it. Alright, so... Uh, go to Mexico to the cave, get the other statue from Tresidor in Europe, and meet your fate in Peru. So, we did the first part of that anyway. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so how, how, hold on, how do we control Ernest? Standing up, press D button upward, press the D button right or left for each direction when crouching, press hold D button down for lying flat, then from lying flat, you can stand up, crawl, rotate, or swim. Broad jumping, shoot the whipcord at a tree branch or a hook to hitch the whipcord, then press the B button to jump while using its reaction while the whipcord is hitched. The distance jump, yeah, it seems like it's very timing based. It's not really reliable. 
Uh, your character, Ernest Evans, American Explorer. Enemy characters. Enemies who attack Ernest Evans. Why are they doing this? Life gauge. Two gauges for Ernest's life. Uh, let's see. Ernest Evans Game Basics. This is an action game. You will manipulate Ernest Evans, Explorer, onto different stages, such as mysterious caves, ruins, towns dominated by gangs, and so on. The game consists of 12 different stages. Each stage has its own unique settings, boss character, enemy characters, treasures, and so on. You will clear each stage by succeeding either the following actions. Defeat the enemy boss, capture treasures... Let's see, game over and continuous play. Okay, so con there are five continues. Stages, okay, 12 stages. Mexico. The first place Ernest Evans will explore in the cave of the god Cotarique. He will come across dreadful traps before finding an idol. Okay, so that was the first stage. We found the idol. Peru, the Yucayari Valley. Ernest explores the darkest part of Peru. Uh, in order to locate the Maver Temple. It's not that easy. Something waits there. Something indigenous to the Yukayari Valley. So we did the second level. Europe, Trans-Europe Express. In pursuit of the Syndicate Gang, Ernest will travel across the ocean to Europe on a train. Intense battles occur once again in a Trans-European train. Then we get to Belgium. Brussels, uh, let's see. Ernest must escape from Syndicate group members. To, to face Brady Treseder once and for all, then Mongolia, the Gobi Desert, will Ernest survive the harsh desert and the many obstacles that stand in his way to returning to Peru. Okay, so after you face Treseder, then you have to go back to Peru. The United States, Grand Canyon, Arizona, with his chain whip, our hero will find the Colorado River, where fierce water creatures want to make Ernest into a seafood dish. Okay, so... Let's see. Ernest Evans. Okay. It did say there are 12 levels, so let's see. The countries are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I guess two levels per country, I, I suppose. So I guess we probably died, what, the second level of Peru, I think? That might be the case. Let's see. Ernest Evans is the 23-year-old grandson of the well-known archaeologist and treasure hunter of the 30s and 40s. Ernest is, is the son of Annette. Annette, uh, by the way, I think is the main character from El Viento. Uh, he, and that they were talking about her in the intro story. He commands a handmade chain whip and wants to follow in the footsteps of his grandfather. Annette, now in her 70s, used to be a sorceress in a village deep inside Peru. Dr. Ernest Evans adopted her as his daughter. When she finds out her son has gone on a quest to find the other statues and to contain Maver, she races to Belgium to aid Ernest. Brady Treseder, the successor to Vincent de DeMarco in the Syndicate for the 1980s. Treseder has found out the secret of Maver and has claimed one of the Maver idols. Ernest heads to Belgium to defeat Treseder and to keep him from summoning Maver. And limited warranty. Add for Trazia. Okay, so that is the story. That's the backstory here. That's what's going on in Ernest Evans. Er Ernest Evans, the, the new one, the 1980s version, has to get the idols. Right, get and then get the idols. It says meet your fate in Peru, but Peru is only the second country? And then I guess after that, for some reason, he has to keep going to U Europe and then Belgium and Mongolia and the United States. I think the Sega CD version does have, like, cutscenes and such. Uh, however, the Genesis version really does not indicate to us much about what this story is and why we're doing the things we're doing. So maybe the way to take Ernest Evans is to be a, a bit more cautious about things. Go a little slower. Considering, whoop, and then sometimes like that happens where like I'm now like prone while after doing a somersault. I didn't mean to do the somersault. I'm not entirely sure why I did that. And then I just have to whip my whip like mad in the hopes that no one will get me. Watch out for the porcupines. Oh, 
unfortunately, the Sega CD version, I think, was only released in Japan, so... I mean, I don't know why. If they, like, bothered to release this in North America, why wouldn't they release the Sega CD version with its cutscenes and such? Well, you know, at the time, there seemed to be sort of an impression that, among publishers, that when it came to CD games, it was the FMV that people wanted. Gotta, people want, it's the future of interactive entertainment. Gotta make those interactive movies, and well, well, it was a little bit heartbreaking for me who owned actually owned a Sega CD at the time. Uh, cause that's not exactly what I wanted. Oh, don't touch that. It's not exactly what I wanted from the Sega CD. I was just, you know, when I got the Sega CD, I was thinking, cool. So it's like... Because it's like, okay, so now imagine, like, games that... But they... Like, the games you were playing on the Genesis and Super Nintendo, but those games would not be restricted with the, the memory that cartridges had. Because, you know cartridge space was expensive and like the high the biggest cartridges were like 32 or 40 megabits but now whoop, and uh, here's a cd with like that goes go up to like 640 megabytes and it's so cheap uh imagine what what they could actually make with this that was you know that was the thought and it was like oh no they're just like making fmv games whoop da da And the Sega CD actually did FMV really poorly. Like, really poorly. It wasn't, it wasn't a system that was actually good for that, even though there was so much of it on there. So honestly, for me, who had a Sega CD at the time, a game like... Uh, a game like Ernest Evans, which was like a traditional game... Well, traditional. As traditional as it looks. I was trying to stay out of the water. So much for that. So a game like Ernest Evans... Um, like a more traditional game, but with, you know, additional, like, anime cutscenes and such. That's actually what I would have... That's actually exactly what I would have wanted. Okay, I got, like, an apple... Oh, yeah, that's right, that, that, yes, that. So it was always cool when there was... Uh, it was always cool when there was a game that came out for the Sega CD that actually showed off the CD capabilities in some way that was not FMV. Mm. Mm -mm. I think the only games of Wolf Team that I ever played was Soul Feast, but that was because that was a pack-in with the Sega CD. I liked Soul Feast. It was good. I liked it. it. Wasn't you know not the best shmup I ever played, but it was it was good enough. Almost made it out without dying. weapon. Do I throw rocks? Okay, let's see how this works. Alright, it's powerful. You can't just, like, whip it around like you do with the, the whip, of course. 
It's more precise. So is that good or bad? I guess it's going to be up to you. But it is a lot more powerful than the whip. Yep. Just going over that guy. So <laughs> Just constant somersaults. Now let's change back to the whip. Maybe that stone, maybe the rocks will be useful against something else, but... The, cha the chaos of the whip, I think, works better in general. There is a gem down there. I don't know if I want to bother getting it. I do think that there is health down there, but there's also scorpions. That's, <laughs> please stop that. Please stop somersaulting, Ernest Evans. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. When Ernest starts rolling, it's hard to stop him from doing it. That uh, the stones cannot get past his tentacles. All right, just barely uh, did that. I wonder. It doesn't seem like it. Very good. You know, one thing about... Was oh, that a... Oh, that is an upgrade. You swing it differently. Uh, uh, uh. One thing about Wolf Team is that they are they were pretty ambitious with what they were doing here with the character animation and some of the effects going on like that those like that one enemy that was sort of spinning in and out of the foreground and background. And you can't say that they weren't going for it. Oh, that was only temporary, I guess. It is pretty terrifying when you're getting close to any enemy just because of how fast they can kill you. Just how quickly it can be over. Kind of looks like where I came from. Does it repeat? And maybe it does. All right. Well, I just took the damage. Is just what I did. It's just, just all I did there.
Oh, we found a boss. It's not like a monster or anything. It's a dude. Is this the guy we were looking for? Like, we were looking for someone named Tresseter. I don't know if this is him. I didn't expect him to be, like, a wizard. Oh, okay. I beat him bright as I died. Oh, okay, now we're on the train. And now we're fighting, uh... Carmen Sandiego with a big hooked sword. Well, I mean, do we actually have to fight any of these people? It's a train, right? You go from one end to the other. It seems simple enough. Well, jump on top of this. What? Hmm? Uh, hmm? Uh, uh, hmm? Um, do I not do this, then? Because I can't go forward. I can't seem to jump on top of that. Like, he's not grabbing at it. All right, maybe let's go back. Okay, I can get on top of this. Oh. Is that, that's not a friend. I don't think that's a friend. Uh, uh. I got killed by her feet. I ducked down, and my face hit her feet, and I, my life drained. Such is the danger of being an international treasure hunter, Ernest Evans. Look at him. Look how handsome and charismatic this man is. Even though, you know, that's kind of a weird thing when you think about it is, like, when you had games during this time, like the 80s and early 90s, where there were some clear anime stylings, and it didn't look bad or anything, it looked good, and then, like, the manual would, like, it looked like this, and it's just, hey, just draw Indiana Jones, just do that. And it's like, that's not, like, you can see what he looks like at the beginning of the game, he doesn't really look like that. No, just do it. Just draw Indiana Jones. And it's like, what should he be doing? He should be draw he should be fighting this like really buff shirtless man with tight pants on. Is that oh yeah? D yeah, that's ex yeah, exactly. That's what I, I said. I'm paying you to draw Indiana Jones fighting this this thick bandit. And I, okay, look, you're paying me. And, uh, well, anyway, that's where we died, on that train. I did not die to the Thick Bandit, however. I died because my face touched a sniper's ankle. And I lost all my health because of that. Um, it's, yeah, the, uh, Ernest, you know? You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say Ernest Evans is, it's, it's a bully. That's right. It may not look like it. It may not look like it deserves a bully. I'm going to say that Ernest Evans, though, gets the bully. Ernest Evans is a game that goes for it. It knows what it wants to be. It's very confident in what it is. And it just says, hey, you just have to learn how to control Ernest. And if you do, Ernest will get you to where you need to go. And if you can't do it, that's your own fault. Uh, it's a very confident game. And... Uh, you know, I, I actually think it's pretty fun, despite, you know, everything about it. Uh, but that has been our time, I guess, with Ernest Evans. I could start again from the beginning, but I don't know if we get any further than we did. So even though usually we would spend an hour, uh, I guess that's just... I think I've played enough to be able to judge Ernest Evans. Um, and... Maybe I would want to play it on my own time, but I don't think I'm getting any further tonight on the stream. So we're going to say that that's it. As Ernest... You know, I, you know, I noticed that the computer player, like the in the attract mode, it, f it frequently doesn't seem like it's playing all that much better. Like, you would think that the attract mode would be an example of how to play the game really well. I think, I guess it is playing really well right now, but not always. Let's see how well they do.
I mean, he's avoiding taking down. Okay, no, he's okay. Yeah, he just there. Okay, there we go. There we go. He just took the big damage. The hook is so weird. You don't swing on it. You hook on it, and then like you get boot. You you get like accelerated. You get launched off of the hook. It's strange. Anyway, that's been Ernest Evans, and. Uh, that's been, just been our little look. Oh, look, yeah. Look, okay, look how much damage you just took there. That's what I'm saying. I got took, taken by surprise like that as well. But like I said, that's Ernest Evans. He is a very flexible man who wants to get treasure to, because he wants to live up to his gramps. Can he live up to his gramps? Well, we did not live up to gramps tonight. But maybe you can live up to gramps. Maybe you can.